All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome to Real Classic Film Reviews and welcome to the part of the channel where we have a little bit of a look at what I've picked up um, on physical media over the past month. This being the pickups for the month of May. I'm finally caught up after that uh, late video for April's pickups, very late. I think it was only a couple of weeks ago. Certainly felt very uh, recent, uh, but we're going to kind of get caught back up now and I'm going to show you everything that I picked up in the month of May as we head into June. Crikey, halfway through the year, the year's flying a flying past like it usually does um lots of great titles being released all the time like any collector it's a big struggle to keep up as long as kind of dipping back in you know and out of the back catalog of things that you want to pick up off your kind of wish lists but we'll start as you can see with uh, my upgrade to the godfather trilogy on 4k which i'm finally managed to snag a great deal on i know the deluxe box set is currently on some kind of deal that was always going to be uh, a little bit too big and unwieldy for me I'm trying to really kind of settle down on those big like bulky releases um just to kind of save space but obviously knew i was going to pick this up at some point um and really really wanted it to, you know it's i don't know how many variations or different kind of um iterations of media you can pick this up on but finally snagged it really happy that i did um you know there's not a great deal to be said about the movies other than uh they i believe they look fantastic uh on 4k i believe this is one of those kind of must own box sets which is a good thing i recently watched these films back in the cinema that were released uh re-released i actually only saw the first two um didn't get around didn't kind of uh couldn't fit watching the third one into my schedule but um, really happy that I kind of finally caught part one and part two on the on the cinema on the big screen, um, and you know they look fantastic in there. It was a you know a, a good cinema experience. You know loads of special features. I think this also contains. Oh gosh, one second. I believe it contains the um, oh heck the 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 coda the Godfather coda. Uh, Coppola's reimagining or re-editing of part three, which again I have yet to see. So that's going to be the kind of. Uh, you know, a good selling point for picking this set up. I'll finally get to watch uh, part three um, and see what I think because it's obviously, you know, it's a weak link in the chain, I suppose. But, you know, coming up against the first two, it's what film's not going to be the, the weak link in the chain. It would have taken a kind of Herculean effort to uh, to match the first two after all those time. But hey-ho, right, The Godfather. Um, you know, it's a classic. Uh, right, a couple of DVDs that I picked up. I've just recently been to see Top Gun Maverick, which I loved. Really love that film. Uh, go check it out. Very worthy successor to the 86 original. Um, surpasses it in many ways. Uh, and I also I picked up um, a couple of good charity shop finds. Managed to pick up Far and Away. Uh, don't judge me. I've actually never, ever seen this, I don't think. Or if I have, I saw it at the time of release, which I believe was, you know, like the very early, very early 90s. Um, 92. Uh, so obviously kind of... A young Cruz and Kidman there um, but thought I'd pick that up because it was like pennies and also picked up uh, 93's The Firm uh, which I really really enjoy um, you know obviously a Sydney Pollock film from a, a Grisham novel uh, which I haven't read I'll be honest but I always remember you know really enjoying this hell of a cast in it as well I think you've got um, oh gosh what, who was it Janine Triple Horn, Ed Harris, Holly Hunter, um, Hal Holbrook uh, so this you know and obviously directed by Pollock but well, that's uh, the firm. So looking forward to checking that back out also. Um, managed to pick up, oh, I'll do those. Yeah, I'll do these. Um, so I picked up a, a, quite a few of these uh, Studio Canal vintage classics. So I'm really getting into uh, kind of fleshing out my collection on these. And this is my, still my favourite David Attenborough performance in uh, Brighton Rock um, as, as Pinky, the uh, notorious kind of little hoodlum, 17 year old hoodlum that he plays in there. Um, Excellent, excellent film. Never seen the remake of this, and I'm always curious about watching it. I've never got around to it. Uh, but this is just an absolute classic. What is it? 1948. Really kind of vicious little film in places as well. Um, again, you know, great supporting cast, but excellent. Always love the ending of that, which I believe is different to the book and the remake, but I really enjoyed it. I think some critics weren't keen on the ending, but it's, it's fantastic in my opinion. Uh, picked up 1976's Aces High. Um, with Malcolm McDowell, I believe, um, World War One pilots. Uh, da, 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 da. Also stars Peter Firth, Christopher Plummer. Right, okay. So don't know anything about it, but found a great deal. So very much looking forward to checking that out. Um, there's the extra bits and pieces on the back. So, and I believe I want to say it was directed by. Oh, let me have a little peek. Oh, crikey, I can't see on there. 
Oh, Jack Gold. No, it's not who I, who I thought was who I thought I directed it. But certainly looking forward to that. Great cover art on that as well. So uh, continuing on with the uh, vintage classics, I picked up a personal favourite of mine, Went the Day Well. Um, a Graham Greene story. Sleepy little village in the south of England gets invaded by Nazis. Very, might sound very similar to uh, The Eagle Has Landed, but it isn't. It's a, you know, it's got a completely different vibe to that. Um, it's ever so British. It's it's fantastic. It's a great piece of um, a great history piece. A great piece of kind of war era uh, propaganda, obviously being released in forty two. So, um, you know, and and certainly made when the threat of kind of a Nazi invasion was was a real and b used as a, a kind of you know. A, uh, a cog in the propaganda machine to kind of make sure everybody kept stum and, and didn't leak secrets and things like that so i went the day well uh really looking forward to uh, checking that back out i think i might do a review of that one as well um because i do love it and i feel like it's underappreciated so next up uh, you know another one that's in that same vein i suppose uh ice cold in alex with uh john uh, john mills and anthony quayle obviously with, along with uh, sylvia sims but um jerry thompson film brilliant kind of desert set World War Two movie, um, 60th anniversary edition. Uh, let me just have a quick look. There was something. Do, 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 do. Oh no, it's not the one I was thinking of. Yeah, recently watched half of this quite on TV, um, and got me thinking. You know, I didn't own it, so it was about time. Right, next up is a uh, great healing comedy in Whiskey Galore, um, filmed by Alexander McKendrick. Uh, I don't really know who the kind of, I don't think there's any great stars in this, but no, this is just such a kind of vintage era. What's this? The late 40s, vintage era Ealing. Um, and it's just, <laughs> it's just fantastic. Um, again, extraordinarily, um, you know, kind of British, uh, not silliness, but it's got that kind of strange humour running through it that we the British are kind of famous for, I guess, or infamous for, um, I should say, but... Uh, yeah, uh, a ship carrying 50,000 cases of whiskey runs aground and the inhabitants of a Scottish island can't resist the temptation to replenish their supplies. Uh, only an English home guard captain uh, stands in their way. So, yeah, just, oh God, yeah, brilliant. Um, what did I pick up after that? Uh, picked up a network DVD of The League of Gentlemen, um, which I'm very much looking forward to checking back out. Been a long, long, long time since I watched this. Um, obviously not to be confused with the uh, the 90s TV show or the extraordinary League of, League of Gentlemen, the uh, weird kind of crackers, abomination of a film, I suppose, released um, in the early 2000s, I think it was now. Uh, this, look at this, I mean, this has got one of those casts, uh, Jack Hawkins, Nigel Patrick, Richard Attenborough, Brian Forbes, um, just, you know, outstanding. Um very much looking forward to checking that out again. But basically, uh, a kind of a rogues gallery of acting talent getting together in a in a crime caper. So really can't fall off. Uh, great. These these network releases are really good as well. Uh, I need to pick up more of those. All right. Uh, what else did I pick up? I went on a little bit of a western uh, binge, which I think we covered a little bit in the previous video with some of the Clint Eastwood stuff that I picked up. Um, kind of continued that on re-picked up how the west was won because i did have it a long 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 time ago um and i think i kind of got rid of it in a in a big kind of clear out that i had and that was a long time ago i think it was probably a new release at the time um and don't think i've seen it since oh, well, i definitely haven't seen it since then so i'm looking forward to to checking that back out there's a bit of damage on this case which came um I think it came from eBay, this one, which was a bit unfortunate. But outside of that, it's in uh, tip-top condition. But definitely looking forward to uh, checking that back out. Also picked up um, Shane, finally. Finally picked up a copy of Shane. Um, I think I was going to do a review of it at some point and realised that I didn't have it in the collection. So um, I think I reviewed something else. It was maybe um, River of No Return or something like that. Uh, but oh, I mean, Shane, what a classic. Outstanding. Um, you know, Alan Ladd. Uh, Van Heflin, who I love in this, um, but yeah, just a, an excellent kind of big George Stevens uh, production. Uh, I think Jack Jack plants the baddie in this. Yeah, he's fantastic. As I mean, he's great as a baddie anyway, isn't he? But yeah, Shane, can't wait to check that out. And also a film uh, I picked up and then rewatched very recently, uh, Two Road Together, um, a John Ford film, um, starring oh well, for the first time was it the first the first collaboration between James Stewart and. Uh, um and john ford um also stars oh god i forgot his name i'm so bad oh i'm having a bad day let's have a look 
Richard Widmark, Craig, sorry, do apologise. Richard Widmark and um, James Stewart going off on a mission to rescue uh, captured, you know, white women, captured squaw from uh, the local um, Native American camps. Um, pretty brutal in places. Um, pretty savage. Some of the some of the kind of the stereotypes obviously don't hold up, maybe as much as they used to. Um, and certainly from what was this the late uh, sixty one. So it you know it's of its time. Um, some of it probably hasn't aged well, but still a great rollicking ride, so to speak. And next up, just a couple of titles I picked up. Picked up Copland. I uh, didn't own it. I actually picked this up before the um, unfortunate passing of Ray Liotta. May he rest in peace. Great actor, brilliant. Um, you know, stars in kind of quite a few of my favourite films. Uh, you know, Goodfellas, not the least of them. But this one is a fantastic, um, like neo western kind of cop thriller hybrid. I mean, look at this poster: Stallone, Keitel, Liotta, De Niro. I don't think it did as well as they maybe thought it would do at the time of release. I remember this kind of coming out. I didn't get to see it at the cinema, but I was certainly around to kind of remember that um, maybe it didn't get the release that it deserved or the um, reception that it deserved. I don't know if that's putting Stallone on the poster. Maybe people expected something else of him, but he's actually excellent in this. And, you know, it kind of proves, you know, I mean, he's got nothing to prove anyway. He's, you know, films like First Blood and... Um, and the first Rocky film, you know, you know that you know that the guy can act. Uh, he just chose to kind of go at the gym and 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 punch people for uh, for a living for the last you know thirty years. But you know, he can go up against Kaitel, he can go up against De Niro in this, and it's really really great. It's very underrated in my opinion. Um, but that's Copland, yeah, and really are rest in peace. And finally, I picked up another underrated film from was it the same year? No, this was earlier in the nineties. I think this was ninety five. Uh, this is Strange Days, directed by Catherine Bigelow, of course. Um, now the Oscar winning uh, director Catherine Bigelow, who uh, before this had only directed things like Blue Steel and Near Dark, both great films, but then came out with this, which was such a strange film. And it, I think it was lumped in those millennium kind of films, which is obviously the plot focuses on, you know, the turning of the century from 1999 to 2000. Um, and some of the technology that was kind of portrayed in here as cutting out maybe hasn't aged as well as uh, you might imagine it as in the past, how long, what, 20, 20 years. Um so yeah, well, knocking on 30 years, but Strange Days, uh, great cast, look at that, Ray Fiennes, Angela Bassett, Juliet Lewis, and a fantastic Tom Sizemore performance, a shame he's not on the, on the poster really, um, but yeah, very much an underrated movie, and I'm going to, I can't wait to check that back out, it's been a long time since I've seen that, but that is that, guys, oh, do you know what, it's not that, I've just literally seen right now, on the shelf, in my little putty away pile, two other titles, um, <clears throat> Almost missed those out. And that is um, a couple of Italian crime thrillers. I'm getting back getting back into my Italian crime thrillers. No, I'm getting into Italian crime thrillers. Uh, don't know a great deal about them, so uh, apologies. But the first one I picked up is uh, Revolver, which I'd never seen. And I'm not sure if I'd heard of it. I'm a big Oliver Reed fan as well, or I like to claim that I am. Uh, maybe I'm not as big as an Oliver Reed fan, fan as I thought. Um, but this is directed by, uh, is it Sergio Salima? Sergio Salima, yeah. Um, again, I, I apologise. I don't know a great deal about it, but it's got Oliver Reed. Um, he's driving around in cars, shooting guns, and that's about all I can tell you about this film. So, again, if you've seen this film, um, let me know in the comments um, what your thoughts are on it, and I'll you know try and bump it up the uh, to-view list. I'm trying to get through these uh, uh, Italian crime thrillers and um, Italian horrors as, you know, as quickly and as... Um, I'm watching as many of them as I can. Uh, the second one then again was uh, Violent City again. Never, ever heard of this until 88 announced it. Uh, Bronson and Savalas. I mean, that that cover sold it to me straight away. Uh, I didn't really need to read any blurb about it. Again, um, <laughs> they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. He did. Um, you know, Savalas, Bronson with a gun and a naked chick on the back. So it's, you know, straight away it's probably going to be... Um, and entertaining watch Jill Island. All right, I did not know Jill Island was in this. Obviously, Bronson um, bringing the misses around again. And this is, a, I mean, eighty eight absolutely um, do the do the business. Does this contain? So this is actually disc two is a separate film, I believe. Is that right? Heck, I think it is. Crikey, I do apologise. Uh, so you know, has this got a separate film as? Um, the extra feature and the poster there of the uh, of the cover. I can't wait to check that out. And the cat's just uh, ran past, uh, obviously bored of me rambling on about 
movies. Uh, so yeah, picked up a couple of Italian classics. Well, as I say classics, maybe cult classics. Um, so that's the stack for, where are we, heck? I'm still not right with my months. That's the stack for everything that I bought in May. Uh, guys, thank you for uh, sticking around and listening to me ramble on. Um, massively, massively appreciated it if you've made this far through the video. Bless you. Uh, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.